Oh, well, it's Tuesday yet right. again. Yes. <laughs> Why is it Tuesday? And we're still talking about, oddly enough, as we've been doing scales and gauges, we're still stuck on O scale. We are. We haven't gotten past O scale. No. And it's the it's the number O, not the letter. Right. So we're still on the ground floor. Oh my. We're, we'll, we'll be moving on. Anyway, when last we spoke about O scale, you said you had a question. I had a question. And that question is? What the heck is that third rail for? What, and that's to, on the Lionel trains and on the Marks trains, mm -hmm. and as it happens on the Markland trains, there's a third rail. I knew this because my grandmother had a train that ran around the Christmas tree and it had three rails. And when I was a kid, I'd noticed that real railroad tracks only had two. Well, it depends on the railroad, but yes, yes. <laughs> So we'll come told. we'll come back to the fact that there were a couple of railroads that did have that center rail. Not where I grew up. Not where, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, we digress. We need to wind the clock back to the 1800s. And I wasn't growing up during that yeah. period. We could actually wind the clock all the way back to 1750, but let's only take it back to about 1890 and Lionel trains. These are tin plate Lionel trains. This is an old one. This is a newer one. But um, Lionel really is the one that made that decision to put the third rail there. Why? Now let's wind the clock back to 1750. Someone invented an electric motor. Can, do you believe that it goes that far back? Well, yeah, because I was doing some research on an electric car at one time and found out there was electric cars. That well, and speaking of electric cars, Nikolai <laughs> Tesla... Uh -huh. Uh, is, is considered the father of the alternating current motor. Uh -huh. But in those early days, motors, it was a pretty sketchy piece of business. Also, interestingly, some of the earliest electric motors in the 1800s were used on trolley cars. Yes. So, go figure. Right. But as anybody that's studied anything about Nikolai Tesla and anything, there were these wars between the AC and the DC people. Alternating current and direct current. One of these first days, we're going to do a whole thing on train electrics. And then we're going to be back at my Camaro because it had alternating current too. Sometimes it ran, sometimes it didn't. <laughs> I'm, I'm so familiar with that car. Yeah, you know, Every car ride. I've ever owned. <laughs> we digress. Dead um, alive. A quick, a quick explanation, we'll do a, an in-depth explanation someday in the future, the difference between AC and DC. So in direct current, you have two poles, a positive and a negative. The electricity flows, the electrons are coming out of the negative pole, they're going over to the positive pole, and they just go around in a circuit, that word, circuit, okay? Because they have to get returned back to work from whence they came. Mm -hmm. So on a model railroad, you put the positive on one rail, the negative on the other rail, train takes off and goes down the track. You, you want it to back up, flip the poles so the negative's on the other rail, positive's on the other rail, train backs up. Doesn't because flip over or anything. At that's, that's the way direct current works. It's either flowing that way or it's flowing that way. It, it can only flow in one direction and it just keeps going around in a circle and then it goes the other way. So if you're building a direct current train, the train kind of has to do the same thing too. It goes around in a circle, you throw the switch and it goes around and it backs around a circle. That's easy. Okay. Now, if you were to take that train, however, and run the track back on itself, that outside rail went around and just became the inside rail. And now... There's this, this smell, this, this aroma of burning insulation with, with, with it's, a, it's a particular nose with, with notes of ozone and, and, um... Semi-sweet burning rubber. <laughs> that's the... <laughs> and that's your, that's your power supply. Yeah. Going up in flames. <laughs> that's a direct current. Railroad. Well, in the in the earlier days, alternating current was a whole lot easier. Why? Well, it was kind of hard to build a direct current power supply in those days. You needed a rectifier, which was a tube about this, and then there were filter capacitors, and it was just it was a lot more difficult to build a direct current railroad. So Lionel 
said, all we need is a variable transformer. It'll be big and it'll be heavy, but you can just put this big knob on a variable transformer, line current comes in, no voltage at all is going out, and you turn the knob and you turn the knob, and it's one volt, two volt, three volt, four volt, five volt, six volts, and the train starts to move. Wow. On AC, which means you have to have an AC motor in the train. Alternating current. Alternating current. Now, so the direct current's going around in a circle just like the train. The alternating current, however, is going this way, then this way, then this way, then this way. And it's doing that 60 times a second in the United States and 50, 50 times a second in Europe. <laughs> 60 cycle, 50 cycle. Okay, so you reverse the current. The train's going this way. You reverse the current, the train's still going that way. Why? Well, because the current's doing this. The direction is determined by the magnets inside the locomotive. The only way you can change the direction on the locomotive is throw a switch on the locomotive and then it'll back up. Does that make sense? This is getting kind of complicated, isn't it? But if you're going to run your Lionel train on alternating current, you've got this problem about backing up. Okay, back for a second to the direct current. If you want to do that loop where it comes back on itself, with a, with a direct current railroad, you can set up something called a reversing loop, and you just have two reversing switches ah. on your transformer, and it's easy. Right. But with an alternator, you, I mean, you're going to go over there to the locomotive and throw the thing and go around and come back and throw the thing again. It's just a real problem. So their fix was, we'll run the hot leg through a center rail. Oh, okay. We'll ground out, we'll make neutral both outside rails. And then no matter what the track configuration is, that center rail is never going to be it's anything gonna, other than, than, a, than a center rail. There it is. And that's why they chose to <laughs> do that. And yeah, that makes a lot of sense. There's actually a very, very, very simple explanation for why they chose to do that center rail. <laughs> but what it means is, uh, functionally, until like the 1970s, when things got a little tiny bit haywire, Whenever you saw a railroad that ran on two rails, mm -hmm. that was a DC railroad. Okay. If you saw three rails, that was an alternating current hmm. railroad. Okay. I've, I've never seen one in real life, so that's and, why I have that And question. oddly enough, back to this idea of big rectifier tubes to run DC, the big DC power supply and what a problem that is, some of those earliest HO railroads and that ran on car batteries. Oh my. Because it's easier than trying to have a vacuum tube and everything yeah, and and so then you big. could recharge it with a generator wow and i'd even seen pictures of railroads that just ran on a generator mm -hmm. so they'd have an ac motor hooked to the lines that turned a dc generator and they'd create their direct current that way <laughs> wow so much simpler to just have a variable transformer a variac yes okay yep anyway that's the reason for the third rail a couple of other questions that have come up about the Lionel track is uh, some people have said, well, I've heard of O27. O27, what is O27? Lionel did a whole series of trains later on called O27. Well, in the earlier track, they called it O36 and O30, and it was just the radius of the turns. Oh, okay. So if you were buying a 36 inch turn, that had a 36 inch radius. If you bought a 30 inch curve, that was a 30 inch radius. Mm. And all of their trains could go through those curves. I see. Well, a 36 inch, that's six feet mm -hmm. to turn around and go back the other direction. Wow. So some people found that problematic going around the Christmas tree and stuff, the whole thing and down the hallway and into the kitchen. It just got big. And they said, can't you do a sharper turn? And they said, how about if we go down to 27 inches? Ah, that would be oh, nice. Oh, 27. Now, the problem is if you put the earlier trains on the 27-inch radius track, they derail because they weren't set up to go around no. that. No. They never envisioned doing that. So they came out with a whole line of trains, and it said right on the locomotive, oh, 027. 27-inch mm. radius, it'll go around the sharper turns. And then they also downsized... The locomotives they didn't mm -hmm. really follow a scale anyway these things aren't scale look at the difference in size right here right so since they weren't really following any scale you know 
and people started referring to the 027 trains as the sports models. Because <laughs> they were just a little bit smaller. Uh. And da, da, da. But that way they could get through the 27. So when that question comes up, what is 027, 027? It's the sports model, the later ones, the smaller trains that can go through the 27 inch. Fastback. The Fastback, <laughs> the Mustang, the Camaro. Yeah. Anyway, I hope this was clear as mud. Or not. Or not. <laughs> but hopefully now you know why there's a third rail. Incidentally, when we were talking about that, we mentioned that there were prototype railroads that did that. Really? And you and I saw one. Well, it doesn't run anymore, but we right. saw the surviving track, and that was in Georgetown, part of Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. When they were building the trolley system for Washington, D.C., it's like you're not putting in poles and wires because people want to take pictures of the Washington Monument and the no Capitol wires. and everything, and other railroads, too, trolley mm. traction railroads that we don't really want to have the overhead wires because it's ugly. And they'd put a third rail off to one side mm -hmm. under a shield so that hopefully no one would touch it and die. Yeah. But then it's going to go from over here to over here to over here to over here. And if you're going to try to go up the middle of the street like they were going to do in Washington, how do you do that? So they just ran that third rail right up the middle of the street. Well, that would solve it. And then they put it under the pavement so mm, nobody could to touch, touch it. it. And then there's a little guard there for the, the insulated arm to go down there and touch the third rail. Oh. And now for the same reason that Lionel did it, they could go around, back around. Oh the center goodness. was always the center, just like <laughs> it is with an overhead wire. That's neat. So there was there was madness to that method. And they, that was not <laughs> the only railroad. But it was neat when we saw those surviving tracks right. in Georgetown. They're not right. in use, but there's certain there's places so where you can still see the tracks right there right. in the middle <laughs> of the road. That's cool. Anyway, so yes, there there is kind of a prototype uh, precedent right. for it, and for the exact same reason. Exactly. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> if uh, if you're not a subscriber or maybe even a member to the channel, because if you wanted to help financially support, you could click on the join button on the channel page right. and send us a couple of dollars to help support the channel. But if not, just if just you're subscribe. watching and you're not a subscriber, Please subscribe, doesn't cost anything, mm -hmm. doesn't hurt anything. Just click on the subscribe button, which is right. about to come up just now. Are we ready for it? <laughs> Zoink! <laughs> right there, the subscribe button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet, and we hope you didn't find it boring, because this was a little technical. And <laughs> we will see you on Sunday. See, see you then. Bye-bye.